Fine, I'm Dr. Jiang Kao. We are glad to have you here to participate in our interview and share your knowledge and insight on PERS. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to be with you. And we prepared some questions. And uh, the first question is, uh, according to your experience or your estimation, what do you think is the impact of a PERS in peak production all over the world? Uh, in terms of pig production and the impact of PERS, I think you have two things to think about. One is simply the, the throughput of animals. So the reproductive effects of the virus in the breeding herd can be very frustrating, uh, both financially but especially emotionally. Uh, so inconsistency in breeding herd output. For the growing pig, it's mortality and reduction in average daily gain. So kilograms of pork sold is where the virus has its biggest impact in the growing pig. And that's probably about 70% of the total cost. So do you have any estimation on how much it would be, uh, be influencing, like for in the U.S. or some other countries? In the U.S. marketplace, the estimate's around 6 to $7 per pig, or about $700 million for the industry as a whole. Uh, around the world, it's hard to estimate what that total is because some markets have a higher value for their pork than others, but certainly it's well over a billion dollars a year. And concerning about the uh, prevention of PERS or control of PERS, what's your opinion on the uh, piglet vaccination? What do you see the benefit from piglet vaccination? With piglet vaccination, there's both a direct or a primary benefit, but also a secondary benefit. For the piglet itself, it's protected against mortality. So mortality is very often reduced uh, in the U.S., for example, from 4 or 5% down to around 3%. So a reduction in mortality, but also an improvement in growth rate. So those are the direct benefits for the piglet. It feels better, it eats more, and it grows faster. But it also has a secondary benefit for its mother, for the breeding herd, in that those piglets, when they're vaccinated, shed less virus back to the breeding herd. So the pig has helped directly itself, but also helped in terms of preventing infection to its mother. And nowadays, that's a lot of farms are using the whole herd mass vaccination, so it is convenient and they're using it anyway. And what's your opinion on that, the whole herd mass vaccination against birds? I think the whole herd mass vaccination in the breeding herd is a critical factor to protect all of the herd at the same time, to bring them to a uniform level of protection amongst all of the animals at one time, including the replacement breeding animals. When a project starts, for example, you may also even mass vaccinate the growing pig if it's within two kilometers of the breeding herd and presents a risk. Otherwise, those pigs are vaccinated over time and flow through the system. And uh, now you have experiences in Asia and also you have experience in the U.S. And what do you see in Asia currently the main challenge for purse control? I think the biggest challenge for purse control Within Asia, on the farm, would be the flow types. So farms that have all ages of animals within the same airspace. And convincing people to treat that whole airspace as one population. That all of that herd, when you start the project, needs to be incorporated into the mass vaccination to really suppress the amount of virus up front. And then piglets can be vaccinated periodically thereafter. So that's the idea of the population is different in those farms that are pharaoh to finish. And do you think that uh, one day that Asia will be able to reach the level of systematic purse control as what you have now in the U.S. now eventually? I absolutely believe that Asia can have that same consistent level of performance and purse control. And it really is taking the same concepts, population vaccination, control of the incoming animal, and just applying those in a different setting here in Asia. There are some unique characteristics, and you do have some other disease challenges, but that doesn't mean that you can't control PERS with the same tools and the same concepts just applied to your reality. There are also some few comments on the ARC and me. Uh, people are commenting that um, within the method we are using, we are controlling a PERS within the area. Mm -hmm. And also talking about the elimination People are thinking whether it is only a publication dream or someday it can be reality. What do you think of that? I think elimination is possible, but it's really part of a series of steps. 
first of all, good herd level control, uh, both within the specific farms themselves and then growing out into regions. So similar to what's being done today with Ajeski's virus, starting in areas with fewer pigs, develop the process and get pigs in the right place to eliminate the virus and then begin to grow that out broader and broader to more and more areas. It will be a long process, but it is one I think we can be successful if we work together. And uh, the last question is about the HP strain of PERS, because we know that uh, mm -hmm. PERS, this virus itself, is mutate a lot. And uh, within your experience, we know that's a 184 or 174, there are also mm -hmm. HP strains in US in the past. And now in Asia, we have like HP PERS outbreaks since 2006 and 2007. What do you think about these HP strains, the classical strain, can pr protect efficient protection and what do you think about the HP strain vaccines? What do you think about it? I think in terms of cross-protection with Engelvac, PERS, MLV, with whether it be a highly virulent North American type, the 174 or the 184 uh, cut pattern, or against uh, HP PERS types here in Asia, there's great data both from the laboratory setting and challenge studies where piglets are nicely protected both from mortality but also from lung disease, as well as good cases of doing that same thing in the field. So we know Engelvac PERS MLV is a very stable vaccine, and it has a long history of protecting against multiple types of viruses, including those HP type viruses that are found here in Asia. And I think that the one word I mentioned in there, stability, probably is the biggest difference with an Engelvac PERS MLV versus the current HP PERS based vaccines that seem to have some issues with reverting to virulent and being able to see those viruses over a fairly short time in the life of a pig herd, one to two years, begin to show clinical problems and reversion in the sequence along with development of even lesions in challenged pigs where they just received the vaccine. So I think with Engelvac PERS MLV, you can have both protection, but also a stable, safe vaccine that uh, First of all, it's not going to do any harm to the herd. We heard some comment from the uh, experts, veterinarians. They comment that the first vaccine and the first control itself is more complicated than any other pathogens. Saying what makes matter is the brain behind the vaccine. What's your comment on that? Uh, certainly, first control requires you to work through multiple aspects of virus control on a farm. It's not simply here's a bottle, use the vaccine, and, and keep doing the other things wrong epidemiologically that you're doing. It, so it does require a whole herd and a systematic approach, but you can do it. Uh, we heard some of the same arguments in the U.S., the same stories that the virus keeps evolving, it's very different from the vaccine, we can't control it with the vaccine because it's too old or too unrelated. And when we finally worked enough, sat down with people long enough and convinced them, and we put systematic control projects in place, we've had great success. Thank you, Dr. John Cobb. That's all for our questions. Thank you for your, all your knowledge and all your experiences. You're very welcome. Looking forward to reproducing some of these successful case projects here in Asia.